conversations about culture. You're seriously pulling this podcast about all your nerdy and geek things throughout time and space, James. Today, we're about to get slimed. Are you ready? Ooh, just like an old Nickelodeon episode. That's right. You have been slimed. <laughs> I'm your host, David, and I am again joined by James. What are you up to, James? Oh, you know, the usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just been, a nice... trying to, just been trying to survive the last few months. I understand <laughs> completely. I'm sure everybody else out in the world understands and feels very similar to how we do. Uh, just kind of trying to ride that COVID train again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always fun. But there has been a ray of light this spring. Pokemon Legends Arceus came out, and I've been playing oh. the heck out of that this week. I know that's that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. So I was I was it curious is. to get into that a little bit. I uh, have not had time. Uh, really to dig into that one yet. Um, how are you liking it? I'm enjoying it a lot. It's what the Wild Zone should have been in Sword and Shield. And I'm hoping this is a sign that the franchise is moving <coughs> more this direction because <coughs> they've been uh, badly in need of an update since, uh, well, forever. The yeah. formula's gotten a little stale. It, it is a little bit, yeah. You know, that top-down view. Um, and I kind of saw that Pokemon Sword and Shield was kind of that halfway point like hey let's try out some stuff and see you see if people like this kind of thing that's kind of what i got from i it. mean pretty much it was they they made a handhold game for the switch like i enjoyed sword and shield but it looked bad on the big screen yeah like, it, was, it was clearly not meant to be played in dock mode it was clearly no. meant to be handheld and it was it was very similar to like the pokemon let's go pikachu and eevee where it's kind of an isometric 3d world you know but this is a lot better it's a whole lot better i was wondering to see because i have watched a little bit of gameplay on it just to kind of see what the um what am i what am i thinking of the uh uh gameplay that's the word i'm trying mm -hmm. to say gameplay is what i'm trying to say thanks thanks david thanks so it's, a, it's a big open world yeah and, uh, it's divided up into like five zones that i've gotten to so far five five big zones and the first area you go to is the Obsidian Field Land, so you could literally just spend a dozen hours in the first zone. Oh my god! So let me ask you this: so is it is it all online where you do you run into other people? You don't run into other people. There is kind of a satchel thing where if you were to pass out and die, mm -hmm. you get rescued and you leave behind like your your bag with some of your items in it, and okay. you can find that you can find the bags that other players left behind, and oh, they can cool. find yours, and you get some rewards for that. So it's a little Dark Soulsy, a little bit where you could, if <laughs> if you die, you know what I'm saying. You, if you die, you remember what I'm talking about? Like, so it's if like you die, in, you indirect can, you, indirect communication. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. They don't want people going in and actually just straight up ganking each other and like tagging each other. No, but. so far I don't think there's any online battle mode, which I'm hoping they will add that, but not. I so I mean, far. that's pretty pivotal because I know that in the last few games, even they they had they've had that for few generate pokemon uh, game generations for uh recently it's been I pretty know, core to the while. experience especially for the older fans that's oh absolutely part of the reason they play the kids I mean, of course don't, don't care you but. don't have you don't have to connect via like a, a game boy connect cable anymore but still you know the the the, the sentiment well, is there right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let me ask you this without ruining too much do you guys get do you get their starter pokemon right they're starter Pokemon, and they're the same ones as from Diamond and Pearl. Okay. Uh, Oshwat, uh, Turtwig, and um, oh, what the heck's his face? Cyndaquil. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, that'd be perfect. I'd and be they they all have a that. they all have a unique third evolution that has, for example, I started with Cyndaquil, and his third evolution is a fire ghost instead okay. of fire fighting. So. Oh, cool. I like that a lot. I'm actually, that gives me enough incentive to want to go out and buy it now. <laughs> See, that's one thing I love about Nintendo is they're, they have a plethora of IP right now. So it, it, even though their graphics are probably not as on par as like Sony or Microsoft, it's mm -hmm. just, it's just cherished IP. So I, I will definitely yeah, go in and dig in that. It's kind of got like a Monster Hunter New World vibe where. Okay. Like you're like a, you're a company which has recently come to this area to try and settle it and explore it. There's some local tribes people there. There's the Pokemon of the region. And so you're trying to investigate and discover what's going on with the Pokemon in the area and build up the town and stuff like that. Ooh, cool. I like that idea. That sounds like a blast. Um, on my end, uh, I have been trying to get 
have been uh, trying to catch up with some of the uh, you on Binding of Isaac a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the, some of the tainted stuff and some of the other uh, alternate floors unlocked, and it's just just driving me insane right now. Um, <laughs> Kelly's because, been working on that too. She hasn't gotten very uh, far. Jesus, it is. I'm. I mean, I I love the game, but it's like every chance, every time I get super close to like. You know, because you have to get that when you have to beat Hush three times. And I've beaten mm-hmm. him twice. And I'm trying to get that third time. And the last like 15 runs I've had, I get fairly Aww. close. Out of the 15 <laughs> times, maybe seven, I get. I'm. I'm obviously. I'm going to get underneath that mm-hmm. that 30 minute mark. And I've got good characters, right? I've mm-hmm. got good builds, and I get super close, and I die like right, like right at the end. And I'm like, this drives me insane. And that's so the, the, hush, the hush fight is an endurance contest. I mean, I know. damage only damage only gets you so far for hushing. It's the last uh, two bo- the, the two new bosses you're trying to unlock will are the same way. Um, that's awful, man. Because mother mother is a lot worse than hush. I, oh I God, why do you got to say that, man? <laughs> mother is my least favorite boss. I would much so, rather do the beast than mother. I, so I was wondering about that. <laughs> I didn't know how beast. I was wa- I was watching some guys play beast, and he looks pretty pretty rough but still he seems like a a nice little addition yeah if you can for me the beast part is the easy part if you can get it's the four super horsemen right before him oh wow and then the um oh the purgatory fight or whatever the name of that guy is the uh that comes out of the tv it's oh, you're, past. You're, you're talking to the wrong guy because i try not to spoil too much of that stuff yeah i'm like i've seen some i, anyway, I don't know what, to say there's there you have to do six bosses in a row. <laughs> and the oh beast, God. the beast is the sixth one. <laughs> that is awful. But I, I've been playing a little bit of that, trying to <laughs> kind of grind a little bit, get some of those uh, other uh, newer items unlocked. Um, what else have I been playing? I'm trying to think. I I have been playing a little bit of. Oh, that's what I was playing. Um, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 recently. That was pretty oh. fun. Yeah. So I don't know if you've heard this. they put. I heard they put some polish on it after its kind of bad release last year. If you get it for the PC, which I'm going to highly recommend anybody get it. If they get it, they get it for the PC because it's it's Lots very polished now. It's very fun. If you liked the Witch, if you liked Witcher three, mm-hmm. you will like Cyberpunk 2077. It's different, but the kind of like gameplay feel and the RPG kind of aesthetic is there so okay. it's it's a lot of fun i've dropped about 30 hours into it i think total wow so yeah 30 35 something like that so and i mean there's multiple endings that you can go into um i actually took one where i literally just straight up just killed myself because i had <laughs> I've, I've, i have a virus in your head that's killing you and i'm like oh it's one of the endings and i'm like i wonder what will happen and i'm like click and it's like oh you just sure to blow your brains out i'm like okay it's the fight, cool. it's the fight club ending <laughs> And I'm like, guess we're doing this. So I was like, so I've got my character saved and I'm going to go back and replay it again and try some different endings and whatnot. But it, it's, it's really fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I actually, I, I actually I deleted it for right now off my computer because there's a couple other games I want to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I know I'm trying to get in back into death's door. Um, Cause I put that off to the side and that's a really fun one. That's more of a, like kind of a Zelda ish kind of feel. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing because it life has been busy. So I'm trying to keep up with stuff. So oh, we did. Uh, I think we did both dabble with Honey. I joined a cult this spring. This uh, yeah, spring. it's it's got that prison architect vibe, but it's just it's not very fleshed out yet. I think give no. it another year and it'll be awesome. But that's kind of how I felt about it. I played for about five hours and I'm just like, ah, I'm good for right now. I'm gonna wait till they do some updates and see if they're gonna add some other things. It doesn't feel it has that same, like you said, prison architect whenever it first came out. I remember playing that one because I bought it maybe like six months after it came out and it did not feel like they had fleshed out all the little things mm-hmm. and all the little uh, uh, intricacies of the game. And that's the way this one feels right now. Like if they throw a couple more, probably do maybe like four or five patches over the next year or so. Um I think it'll be a lot better. I think it's they'll. A, it's a management sim, and there's not actually a lot of management to do. Not really. Because, like I said, like I said, five hours in, I'm like, well, I haven't progressed through the whole tech tree, but I've also kind of solved all the problems. So it's just yeah, kind of, like, do I want to keep doing more of the same for yeah, another twenty hours? <laughs> not, not particularly. I'm like, I want to. I have better stuff to do with my time, honestly. So yeah, that one kind of got pushed off to the side a little bit. So I'm gonna give that probably check it out in the next year or so. 
Um, but other than that, is there any other any other video games you've been dicking around with at all? I mean, that's been the biggest stuff this last month or so. Yeah. Any any anime? I know I've noticed. I went on our fun on your Funimation account. You've been you and Kelly. You've been just oh. knocking through. I'll start with mine since, been... since yeah, you're looking. Ahead. Um, I know you're looking. So, uh, ranking of kings. So I saw you guys have started watching this. I was gonna say that has been the surprise, like runaway hit for the season. That is right? really good. So premise. I know we're gonna talk about another anime here uh, for our <laughs> review and whatnot, but it has been crazy good. So the premise for anybody who doesn't know about this one, it's a it's set up in a kingdom, and there is a uh, king that's kind of like slowly kind of dying. He's king getting ready Bo- to pass away. King yeah, uh, boss, King boss, King yeah. boss. I know the names are pretty generic, but I just I was I powered through like six <laughs> episodes last night. It was phenomenal. It's um, it's really amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is really good. But the main character of the story, uh, what is Qui Quibo? Boji, 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 uh, Prince Boji is he's uh, deaf and deaf and uh, mute. Mute. Yeah, that's what he is. Um, and so it's a really unique character. I've, I have never seen a character in an anime like the, where they're like, Hey, we're going to give him a disability and people kind of treat him like he's, he's like, he's dumb and stupid, but he's absolutely not like, he's totally mm-hmm. not like, he's a very smart person. He just it has obviously in the medieval setting, it's hard for him to communicate and whatnot, mm-hmm. but, and he's actually a very talented, uh, I would say I wouldn't call him a swordsman, a uh, very ta- talented dodger. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, yeah. And so the whole premise is, is he's set up to be the heir to this kingdom and he gets it stripped away from him, right? His half, his half brother scoops it and yeah. he gets banished out of the kingdom and then goes downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And he kind of goes on a little quest, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's, it's it's got this delightfully kind of cutesy, like kids' cartoon art style. Oh, yeah. it has like this really surprisingly deep and intricate characterization. Like it's Absolutely. it's really nice. It's almost so I would put it on par with almost game Game of Thrones intrigue a little bit. I like that. <laughs> I like I like that kind of like the way the, the it's machinations, got a lot of, how things move. I like that kind of just stuff. Just wait. If you're only six episodes in, it gets deeper. <laughs> Ooh, good. See, because I was like, I loved the idea where you couldn't really tell whether or not the uh, the snake assassin guy was really like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Like, is mm-hmm. the spearman good? The spear guy good? It's like all these little people like, and it also is like stepmom. Mm-hmm. You're, you're trying to figure out like, man, is like, is she, does she hate him? Does she love him? It's like, what? what is the deal here? Like, does she hate her real son? Because he's kind of a tool. You know, it's just like, it's hard to tell. And I like that kind of like she has vagueness. A complicated, she has a complicated relationship. I think she does genuinely love Boji. Yeah. But on the other hand, he's not really her kid either. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's rough. It's it's fun. And I like that. I like that kind of stuff where it's not so black and white, like how they do a lot of stuff in a lot of other animes. And it's mm-hmm. very, like you said, you know, grayish. And I, I'm, en- I'm enjoying it. So I highly recommend that one out there. Is there anything mm-hmm. else you want to recommend before we start knocking I, into the news? Yeah, there's a couple more. I think they're worth talking about. Uh, sure. My Senpai is Annoying is one I really have enjoyed so far. I have. I saw that one. I haven't. I was like, it's eh. like a sli- It's like a slice of life office setting type okay. anime, which is not normally my thing. I was like, that sounds like but a killing char- anime. But the characters are interesting. <laughs> the art's gorgeous. And it, it's just adorable. Cool. It's this, be- it has this really, really short stuff girl who is, you know, trying to be an adult in the real world, and she has a much taller giant of a man supervisor, <laughs> <laughs> and it's about their relationship. Huh, cool. I might have to watch that one with Jackie. She might like that. that. Cute. Uh, Rumble Garandal is cool. Okay. What's yeah? It was. About it, that it was a bit, it's a bit more memey. It's it's strange. So. <laughs> An alternate universe Japan has taken over Japan and they have exterminated the uh, the weak culture that they see as having driven Japan to have lost the world war. So they okay. have, they've they've outlawed things like you know anime and idols and stuff like How that. How dare they? How dare <laughs> everything, they everything and that <laughs> makes an, uh, Japan great. Uh, exactly. j- anime and idols. <laughs> and so there is this uh, you know this uh, underground uh, revolutionary group that is trying to bring these things back. 
and it's got this like pseudo Gundam thing going on where there's these you know machines that fight, oh, and they no, had to be. Dude, you've you've got me like hooked already now. And they're they're powered by the passion of their pilots, who are called like the Battery Girls, who are of course. Dude, this you know, this this sounds. Total, they're ba- total. They're total weebs. <laughs> so, this sounds slightly like Gurren Lagann-ish, almost. It's got some similar over the top vibes. It's nice. It's worth watching. <laughs> Okay, I will probably. I've got a little time tonight. I'll probably end up watching a little bit of that while I'm doing some Binding of Isaac runs because that's what I usually do. I usually throw like an anime up on the side while I'm playing some Isaac or something like that, where I don't really ha- I kind of pay attention to it. But that sounds fun. So yeah, and there's Sabuki Bisco. I've only seen the first episode so far. Okay, but it has the earmarks of something that's going to be really great. We'll see how it turns out. Okay. But Put that they, on the, uh, the the writing and the art and the music were all really great for the first episode, so we will see. That's very promising. Oh, yeah, actually, that... something something we mentioned before on this podcast, uh, Musoko Tensei. Oh, that's right. Yeah, tur- actually turned out to be a pretty amazing anime, so I am very pleased. Cool. So I will. Those are all like bookmarked out of my brain. So. <laughs> I'm sure I'll I'll just gonna go to see. That's the problem with me is I don't I don't have time to look all this stuff, and I just literally go to your history and I see what you've watched, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what has he been watching? I'm like, this looks cool. This looks cool. Like, so the one I was really kind of interested, in, uh, the vampire cosmonaut. Did you like that at all? Is I've it a little slow? It. I've enjoyed it so far. It's I don't know. It, it's one of those, eh, maybe. It's a it's kind of a relationship study between the vampire cosmonaut and like the guy who's her handler. Okay. And it's kind of thinly draped over the Soviet Russia thing and the vampire thing doesn't really play much into it at all. I don't know. It's uh, it's, it's good. Weird. It's good, but it just I don't know. It didn't carry me. All right. So give it a try. It. It's, give it a try. It's good. Back burner. Get get the real ones done. Ranking of kings first, obviously. <laughs> definitely definitely ranking of kings. And you then the weird one. alternate to- uh, <laughs> Japanese uh, invasion, Tokyo Gundam, Gundam, Gundam. Got it. But that's more important. So that sounds like what up my mind, right up my alley. So, but yeah. So uh, again, guys, that's kind of what we've been up to. If you guys want to write in uh, to us at seriously pointless conversations dot, uh, at gmail.com and let us know what you've been up to reading uh watching playing whatever it is just let us know um and we can maybe uh dig into it a little bit as well but um now i know we uh since we're a little rusty at this we haven't done it in about six months we're gonna get into the news james uh yes today's uh i guess you know since it's it's this month's news so far or last month's news definitely and there's um, been some stuff shaking up the gaming world this month for sure abs- absolutely um it feels a little bit like an arms race to me um but we'll get into that in just a minute so and we've talked about this type of thing before too so this is uh nothing as big as these but, but uh yeah but more of the same more of the same but not this big so yeah, it's it's big money dick swinging around right now it's what it is so um, yeah that's one way to put it that is definitely uh so it's microsoft acquires blizzard activision and king studios um so this was all under one big giant uh umbrella this was uh these all three of these studios were owned by uh they were all together uh, as one conglomerate and uh microsoft came in and were like hey uh we'd like to buy you in your time of need uh seeing as you guys are uh uh, sucking up the uh, bad publicity right now, uh, and we'll give you a whopping sixty-eight point seven billion dollars for your studios. And they're like, sure, <laughs> that's so, a nice golden parachute. Because, uh, yep, sounds great to me. <laughs> well, to be fair though, so I, I, I guess I'll start with this a little bit. I feel like this was probably the best time. I think I, uh, Microsoft had kind of been eyeing this a little bit already. Since, because Blizzard has been kind of falling by the wayside for the last couple of years, and then this year, this last year, it was just like a one-two punch with the uh, sexual harassment stuff mm-hmm. and the discrimination lawsuits that are coming up against uh, Activision Blizzard. Uh, and it's, like I said, this this is the probably they they that was probably a lot of negotiating power for Microsoft to get a better deal. I guarantee you. If say if they would have tried to gone in and my, if Microsoft would have had to gone in and tried to buy Activision Blizzard say like five years ago, they easily would have probably paid like closer to 
more like a hundred billion. I, I'm oh, yeah. serious. I mean, seriously, Absolutely. if or say if COVID didn't happen and Blizzard managed to ship out Diablo Four on time, yep. I mean, Blizzard hasn't had a big win for a while now. The biggest nope. win they had was WoW Classic, and that's a fifteen-year-old game. So yeah, I mean, even even Diablo Two Resurrected wasn't a huge hit. I it mean, a flash, it made a, a flash in the pan. I mean, I don't know yeah. how much they spent to make it, but no, absolutely. So, but is so a kind of a brief rundown, like I was telling everybody. Um, it's according to uh, PCGamer.com dot com um, that uh, the news came. Exactly two months after Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer described the sexual harassment and discrimination scandal at Activision as horrific, and Microsoft was evaluating all aspects all aspects of its relationship with the company. Well, obviously they did, <laughs> <laughs> saying, "Hey, uh, we can buy you guys, and we can fix all this stuff." And of course, uh, uh, Bobby Kotick was like, "Sure, give me that big fat check, and I'll peace out." Yeah, I'd be interested in Microsoft. It's like, you know, we could stop doing business with them or we could just buy them <laughs> and keep doing business. No, absolutely. So right now I know the the US feds, they are they're they're looking into whether or not they're going to allow the merger or not. And that's been an interesting thing the last six months or so. The feds has really taken an interest in what these big technology companies are doing. Yeah. Because we saw well, this was... like with the Google acquisition too. It's like uh, historically they've kind of let the tech companies do whatever the hell they want, and I think they've yeah. started to realize that letting that much money get into one company's hands is dangerous. Well, this all kind of started back when uh, Trump was in office. He started kind of pushing this a little bit, and Biden has really, even though he was kind of like you know decrying everything he was doing, he still kept the the, the engine running on this like hardcore because they know. Mm-hmm. They they know that tech is the future, and that if it's it's going to be, it's going to be the oil barons all over again. It's what it's going to be essentially. It should, you know, it should frighten you a little bit. Not the technology I, itself, but the the undue pressure these companies can exert on our lives. Billions of dollars, and they could literally just look in anytime they want and say, "Oh, hey, David was looking up uh, Hello Kitty Go Go boots." For his um, anime girl costume, he's trying to get together, and I'm like, "What? How did you guys know about that? That was private." <laughs> but you use I mean, use just, Google search, Dave. Yeah, but it's just, yeah, just just look at Google and Facebook together. I mean, the two of them have a control over ninety percent of what you see. Yep. Whether it's directly through what they choose to put on their site or indirectly through the way they search their you know shape their search algorithms in the news. They have incredible influence, and you've seen that even as the political sphere has called upon them to silence their opposition they don't particularly care for. No, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I completely and utterly agree with that. And it, it's it'll be interesting to see whether or not, like you said, if they, they allow this to go in there and, and go through um, <laughs> and kind of see the ramifications of that in the near future. So moving away from more of the political stuff on that mm-hmm. and are you how do you feel about just the merger like what do you well, what do you how do you feel i know we can't protect the future we don't have a crystal ball but i'm not I, sure I, i'm i'm a little bit encouraged because i know that microsoft gave psychonauts a good shake yeah like they they gave tim Schafer. i've read about this over the last few months you know because of course i love psychonauts too obviously that you you they, literally they came 100%ed in, it and i saw they, you, I, they came in a, <laughs> But anyway, Microsoft came in at the eleventh hour, and they gave Tim Schafer the kind of blank check, make the best, make the best game you can. Yep. Money's not an object treatment, which is what Blizzard used to be known for back in the day. And so, part of me is optimistic. Like, does this mean that Diablo Four and Overwatch Two might not suck? Because I would like both those games to be great. Absolutely. And I had kind of given up on either one of those being worth playing. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, I don't know. It's so, hard for me to see Microsoft as the good guys, but yeah, they've kind of made some moves that direction. It's kind of the the old adage is everybody has skeletons in their closet. It just depends on how well they can hide them, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, it, 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 and I, so I'm kind of in the same boat a little bit. So I, I feel that it is more of a, it's definitely a two-inch sword, right? I'm super excited about, Microsoft getting a hold of these IPs and hopefully retooling them and reworking them and seeing what we can get out of them, right? Like you said, I would love to see Diablo 4, you know, in a pristine manner and not just an insane money grab 
from Blizzard like they've been doing the last couple times and mm-hmm. and hopefully and just not shoving this you know online crap down our throats like without you know any <laughs> um without any you know repercussions or feelings of towards the actual players you know Microsoft is pretty good about that. They were they were willing to at least listen to the people and say, "Hey, you know, what do you want us to do?" And if they're like, "No, that's a dumb idea. We're not going to do that. We're going to do it our way." And if they mess up, they're like, "Okay, our bad. We'll try it again." I mean, you mean something something like that Marvel Avengers game that came out, you know. So that was that was more <laughs> of a uh, yeah. I can't really yeah. I, I mean, th- luckily that wasn't. <laughs> That wasn't Microsoft hand. Microsoft hand wasn't in that. That was all Activision. Yeah, that just drive that drove me insane, man. I, I tried. I... I got so mad because I love that IP. I love I love the idea of that game. But they're like, oh, we need to do microtransactions. We need to get off our faces full of all some money. Give us some. I don't know why he's a fat German kid, but give us all some money. You know, it's it's kind of like that. It just drives me insane. You know, whenever game video games, whenever they see this big that big FIFA money ball, I use FIFA as an example because they they make EA more money than on microtransactions than any other like company in the world. Oh, um, and so, and when people see that other companies see that they they just automatically see dollar cents. Oh, we can do that too, but let's just do it with an, an IP that people love, like, you know, Marvel or star Wars or whatever it is. And I'm like, no, sometimes you need to step back and say, Hey, do we really need to shove a shoehorn all this stuff in there? This online microtransaction crap that, people really don't need like is well, there a point and i think it's i think it's just a symptom of how the gaming industry has gone right things have gotten so expensive and so time consuming and such large teams and projects to make these games that it's gotten very corporatized and yep. corporations like a sure bet and that's why we see old franchise being rebooted that's why we see the same call of duty being made over and over and over again the same black ops, the same whatever. I mean, I mean, maybe the Warcraft gotten, game getting ported to mobile. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, every shooter <laughs> has the same chest high walls and the same gun drops and the same dual wielding, and it's all very stale. And yep. I just want to see something shake it up and to see some companies start taking a chance it's, again. It's kind of like that Hollywood syndrome, right? It, it's, it's, it's in Hollywood too. They've rebooted all the movies. It's, too. That's what it is. They they don't they don't want to think of anything new or try anything new um and it kind of it disappoints me a little bit so I, that's why i i'm hesitant for the uh the merger because you know it kind of kind of what i've seen so far from like uh the bethesda buyout from microsoft they really haven't announced anything new uh since their merger honestly they they've announced that they're going to do starfield and uh I think they did they did Deathloop, but those were all coming to Sony uh, PlayStation as well and to PC. So it's nothing original yet, and I'm sure they've got stuff in the works. But in regards to Activision Blizzard, we're not going to see anything probably for the next, you know, at minimum two years before they announce something, right? Yeah, I, I would think so. You were not going to know entirely whether or not they're going to make something new or throw some new IP in. Because there's a lot of talent on Activision and Blizzard that can make some really stellar games and some really cool ideas. I and that's what I'm afraid of is I think they're gonna like maybe put their big giant corporate hand on them and say you need to make a Warcraft game, you need to make an Overwatch, a Diablo, uh, Call of Duty, whatever it is. You know, you need to make another mobile game. You know, it's like no, just I want to see them kind of like pull back and say, hey. We want you to make a really good game. Here's a little creative freedom to try and make what you want. And I want to see them get back to their, and that's what, that's what I'm going to see them get back to those blizzard roots, yeah. like, and do what they were, you know, known for and what we loved and what we saw whenever they first came out, like world of Warcraft. That was, dude, there was no, that, that, that game had no right to be as good as it ended up being, you know, those first few years. So I want to see them get back to that. And I, I, I hope, I, I, God, I, I hope I, my fingers are, are crossed hardcore about it. So <laughs> I want to see it, you know, I want to see that come about, but that's all dependent on whether or not, uh, 
the old uh, U.S. Fed government decides to let that occur. So fingers crossed that occurs. We'll, we'll see. see. So, yeah. But um, moving on a little bit to another big acquisition. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's more of an arms race now uh, in regards to buying up studios. So in other news, uh, Sony had acquired a Bungie. So uh, I know you're probably familiar with Bungie, James. They're mm-hmm. known for uh, working with Microsoft and creating the Halo fr- originally working on the Halo f- franchise. And they're also very well known for the new um, online first person shooter. Um, oh, wow. Had a massive brain fart. Destiny. Wow. Good job, Dave. And that's what I think this is about. I think they're, I think to some extent, the Microsoft buyout too, they're not just buying out the company and its workers. They're also yeah. wanting to get, they get, it's about getting a hold of these IPs. Yep. And that's the, it's kind of like, it's kind of a Disney kind of move, right? <coughs> Disney sort of went in and bought, bought out Marvel and Star and Lucasfilms to get all those IPs and whatnot. I think that Sony's kind of doing that and they're looking at, like you said, trying to maintain that IP within their sphere. Now, Sony has, has said that they're going to keep this, you know, uh, the the but they're gonna allow they want to allow Bungie to you know put their games on other platforms, uh, which has been a very Sony thing for a while. But Microsoft is kind of doing the same thing. I think it's also it's more of a hey we've got this chip to say you know it, it's 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 Sony holding a chip and saying hey you know just in case you guys decide you want to take away all those Bethesda games from all those all the, all those other uh, mm-hmm. platforms or if you want to take all those Activision Blizzard games away from all of our platforms just FYI we've got we've got a little bungee coin going on maybe it may maybe. not be as sure it's only like a 10 cent piece but you've got like a half dollar or a 100 dollar bill over there but still we've got it you know it's like yeah it's kind of what i feel about it so but yeah what what do you feel about it james um <sighs> No, I think to some extent you might be right. I think it's also, I think it's about drawing in IPs. And I think the move mm-hmm. we're going to see in the future is we're going to see the line between these different entertainment genres start to blur a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like uh, they talked about having a Halo TV show coming out. Um, like League of Legends has done music videos and pop stars. And like oh, even, they've, some, and they've got, even they've some live the- even some live concerts. And I think this is about the video game companies are trying to pull in as much IPs and as much, you know, rights to these stories and universes as possible. So that as these bigger, and bigger things start coming out, they have a hold of these franchises. Oh, absolutely. And so whenever the first, you know, you know, Oculus Rift MMO comes out, <laughs> they, have to, they, want, they want to, it's a chair and you sit there and you literally don't move for days. It's exactly. it's awakening it's awaken online, James. Exactly. <laughs> it when, gives when, you muscles. <laughs> exactly. When the first Awaken Online comes out, it's gonna be a Warcraft game and Microsoft's gonna own it. <laughs> That's I I'm not gonna lie, I would probably be willing to play that for a little bit if I had the money to blow on it, just to see if like like I could just read I could study for you know, if for 15 minutes in the real world time, but in game time, it's hours and days. That'd be great. It'd be great. But you get jacked, James. You get like six packs from just sitting there all day. <laughs> I think esports are probably going to be part of this too, because I know this is oh. something else you have on the docket for us to talk about. But esports are taking off. Yep. And they're, they are very big in China and Korea, which incidentally is a huge slice of the gaming market. Yeah. Bigger, bigger than the North American market by a large margin. Absolutely. And so I think some of this is buying up IPs because companies who don't already have an eSport game are trying to make one. Mm-hmm. Like Blizzard tried to do with Overwatch before and they it's... just face planted it. The Overwatch League, I think, was catching on, but then they just kind of face planted it by announcing an Overwatch 2. Yeah. Which really just killed the game. <laughs> yeah. So like and they, I, they I... lost all they lost all their momentum there. But yeah. Kind of going off that a little bit. I have watched a couple Overwatch matches, like game matches, and it just it, none of it's there. Like there's like not there. Obviously, there's not people in the stadium or whatnot. But like if you watch like current viewers and whatnot, it just makes me kind of look and see what, um, like how many people are watching. It's not nearly as many as it was whenever they first opened up man like when they started start, first started doing it so but we'll, well get into that a little bit so yeah just, so they, they should have kept going with the continuous release model the same way that league and dota have done 
yeah. where they just keep pumping out champions. They keep pumping out maps. They can institute a ban system. Try, try to I do mean, something different. It's what they're doing. Yeah. And I think Activision came in and they said, we want sequels. Activision was yeah. really big on sequels. Cause they oh, announced God it. help me. Yeah. Cause it was, it was during that one BlizzCon. They announced it. Overwatch two. They announced the Diablo four. They announced sequels to every franchise. And sure, you can do sequels, but announce like a new IP or something, right? You know, show that you're trying to expand your your stable a little bit. You don't want to work. You just count on old Joe the horse. You know what do they call Sea Biscuit? You know until he's like forty and he can barely freaking walk, and he should actually be just going out to pasture by then. So it's just well, like, well, and man. I think that's what Activision was trying to do. They thought, oh, we're just going to buy out this dying company, and we're going to squeeze them for all they're worth. And then we're going to toss them. And now Microsoft bought them out. They're like, no, 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 no. Blizzard is an icon. Although, be it a very dirty icon. <laughs> we're, we're going to fix this. And we're going to fix you to Activision. And Activision's like, I don't want to be fixed. And I'm like, you will be fixed. <laughs> snip, snip. We'll I'll see fuck. what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, But yeah, I, I'm interested to see how, how the, the Sony acquisition of Bungie kind of affects. I think it's going to kind of have the same effects as the Microsoft thing. They're just kind of pulling in those IPs and whatnot. So um, speaking of, like you said a little earlier, uh, diversifying their IPs, uh, Microsoft actually announced a while ago that they were going to have a Halo TV show and it's going to be centered around uh, Master Chief, from what I remembered. Um, and it's actually coming up pretty close, pretty soon here. Uh, March 24th is when it's going to supposed to be, we should be coming into our realm to view. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to even look at the trailer or not. It looks gorgeous. So I have not looked at the trailer yet. Is it yeah, like realistic or what does it look like? Oh, oh, absolutely, dude. It's, it's just phenomenal. Like it's, how do I put this politely? Um, it's, it's fucking gorgeous. I'll put it that way. So, but no, it's supposed to release on uh, March 24th on Paramount plus. So I know the fun part about that is you can get like a free month of Paramount plus right now. So I would just wait and see if they release it all at once or if it's, uh, if it's, you know, weekly, I would just wait until it's all released and just watch it all at once. Oh yeah. That is gorgeous. I told you, man. Like I said, if the whole, if the whole uh, show looks like that, dude, sign me up, man. I, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm interested to see like what they do. Cause they actually went in <laughs> and did a lot of uh, backstory on Master, Master Chief on you know, some of the other Halo stuff. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the Halo series already, the games and whatnot. So I'm interested to see if, if they're going to be what they're mainly going to be focusing on and whatnot. Cause they don't really, they didn't really elaborate on it too much. They just kind of left it open-ended so I, it I, makes me think they're going to take the same tack that Disney Plus has been doing, where you mm -hmm. kind of take a little slice of a big franchise and expand on it, like, yeah, so like I, they did with the Mandalorian and uh, stuff like Book that. Of Boba Fett, but yeah, which, by the Fett. way, been watching that. Highly recommend. That. I know you're 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 not so much into the the, the live action <laughs> stuff, but it's it, it's pretty fun. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. So. But yeah, uh, and last but not least, kind of like we said earlier, we're getting into a little bit of esports. Is the final uh, final uh, story for today? The esports viewership in Asia has increased by twenty one percent in over one year. So, according to uh, thegamer.com, dot uh, com, according to a tweet from an Asian Electronic Sports Federation, esports has seen a significant rise in popularity over the last few years. The increase in popularity has been particularly prevalent in Asia. Some statistics show that from 2019 to 2022, sorry, 2019 to 2020, revenue viewership and the number of gamers involved in Asian esports grew exponentially. In 2020, revenue from esports in Asia surged to 4.9% from 2019 to 2020, generating uh, $543.8 million. <laughs> That's even despite uh, challenges of COVID-19. The number represents a strong course for 2021's totals, which could be a bit higher. So I think what, what are your, what are your kind of um, uh, feelings behind this James a little bit? Well, I think one, I think saying that this was despite COVID is a little disingenuous. I think people <laughs> staying at home and bored is a great environment for esports. I, yeah. Listen, I think COVID <laughs> actually helped us a little bit actually. So I mean, what's interesting to me is this is in the wake though of the government cracking down on video games. Cause especially in China. Yeah. Especially in China. Like for example, you have to log in like, 
every game account you make online is associated with your real you know government ID. Like there's you get one account per game and it's linked to your real identity. There is this entire oh uh, there was the whole there was a story we covered earlier this year too where they're like limiting play hours for kids. But I think it's just that esports is taking off. People are increasingly seeing video games as a skill based enterprise and oh, yeah. Things are continuing to pick up. Well, you're you're seeing this I don't know, crazy increase, right? And I'm 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 you're seeing that people actually, like you said, are seeing it as a legitimate sport, right? You know, it's it takes it takes practice. You got to get in there and, and put in the hours. Um, some of these guys are doing like 12, 15 hour days running matches, getting their getting their plays down, depending on what they're doing, you know, whether it be, you know, League of Legends, you know, Dota, whatever it is, you know, or, or Overwatch. So it, it's just kind of amazing to see these guys have to put in these time and effort. And they're they're making bank, dude. Yeah, they're they making really between are. between the, just their general paycheck for working, like playing on a team to the sponsorships they get. They're making, some of these guys are making, you know, close to what uh, actual, like, you know, sports guys make like NFL and baseball players do. I mean, they're making millions of dollars a year. Well, and I've been looking into it because we've been playing League of Legends pretty hard lately too. Oh, and, you're trying uh, to get into that uh, professional scene, James. You're going to do it. I am. I am not trying to get into it, but it's interesting <laughs> how people transition into it from the higher levels of the skill play and everything. And I, oh yeah, I think it's interesting. It's it's a dream for people. It's a way to get out of whatever environment they're in, and you know use their skills to make money. I think it's in the way they are farming players from the player base and promoting them up the ladder. They've mirrored the same thing you had going on with sports where people play it as a kid and they get, you know, brought into the high school teams and the college teams and eventually professional teams. Like they've ignited some of that same passion. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. And I think it's very prevalent though. Like you said, even more so in like <sighs> Asia, in Asian countries, especially there. So you're seeing it just like crazy big, like you said earlier in uh, South Korea and Japan um, and even Taiwan to this point. Um, and China to an extent, um, China is a little bit more strict on that, like you said, but you're seeing like, if you looked at any of the teams, like any of the Overwatch teams, over usually half of the players on each of those teams usually is Asian of or some Asian descent, right? Just it's it just shows their market is far outstripping anybody in North America, South America, Europe, any of those countries. It's just it's bizarre. It's amazing to see, right? Well, and just <laughs> culturally, they're very competitive as well. Yes, <laughs> in a in the, in a way that people in America just aren't anymore. It's uh, it's incredible yeah. to see, and, and I, I'm very excited to see like what different sports it pushes in uh, or different kind of games it pushes in. Because right now, you like you said, pretty much we have the genres like MOBAs, shooters, and um, real-time strategies like with StarCraft and stuff like that. But uh, I'd be interested to see once they start getting things like racing games in there or even, um, oh, what's the one where you, uh, you're you a car and you're just knocking into the goal? I can't remember what it's called. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a car and you can like do aerial acrobatics and it's basically like soccer, but you're like a remote control car. I can't remember what it's called, but Oh I know I you know what I'm talking about. RC, you know, like RC racing games back in the day. You know, no, so it's it's really popular. I can't remember what Zach's gonna kill me because he plays it. I know he does. Oh Rocket um, League, Rocket League. Rocket League, there you go. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember what the name of it was, but yeah, I I haven't ever I've never played that game. But it's once you start seeing something like that, like go in and become really popular. I think, I think that you're going to start seeing more and more people kind of like gravitate towards little, little genres here and there. And hopefully it'll, mm-hmm. it'll start pumping out some money, but, but yeah, I think it will. I mean, speed running is taken off as a popular sport and I think esports are oh, just yeah. another extension of that same fever. No, absolutely. So, all right. Well, I think that about wraps up our news segment. Is there anything <laughs> else you would like to talk about on that? I know we kind of like went, went long on that one. So no, I think we're good. <laughs> so yeah, that's fine. So, um, so we're finally getting to the final portion of our uh, show. And if you guys are not familiar with the show and this is your first time listening to it, um, like we said, we kind of do a little intro and we talk about everything, how everything's going. We do some quick little news. And then we finally get to a uh, probably like a, a 15, 
20, 30 minute uh, review of a show, anime, uh, video game, book, whatever we've kind of been uh, getting into in the last you know year or so. And we actually are going to talk about an anime. It's actually one of our favorite an- favorite anime of uh, I would say twenty nineteen. I think it's when I saw it. I don't. I think we mentioned it. it. I think we mentioned it in our best of twenty twenty one episode. We did. I know we Last did. Last year um, it came yeah, up because like I have it actually. I, have, I pulled up and it's definitely in my my, my list there. <laughs> but it's uh, it's called the the time that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Um, so do you yeah. want to do a you want a quick little rundown, James, for me? That time I got reincarnated as a slime is a anime based on a Japanese light say fantasy novel. It got mm-hmm. written by Fuse, illustrated by Mitzvah. It has your basic, um, you know, born in another world type storyline, basic Iseke, where <laughs> it's a salary man who gets murdered by a random faceless murderer. Mm-hmm. He cries out his last breath to his best friend that he needs him to oh, get yes. his hard drive. Uh, throw it in the bathtub. <laughs> throw and it in make the sure bathtub. Make sure it's wiped. That's right. Let's get throw it in the bath- That's right. Yeah, throw it in the bathtub. Make sure it's totally wiped. Why would he do such a thing, James? I mean, there's I don't nothing know. bad. I don't know. There's uh, some memes just can't be explained, David. But <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are curious about this, go look it up. It's it's kind of quite humorous. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he gets reborn in a new world. The twist on the story is that he gets reborn as a monster instead of your typical hero protagonist. He does get born with overpowered abilities, but they're all related to being a slime. So, like, he's immune to heat and cold, and he doesn't have to eat and things like that because he's just a slime monster. So, if anybody's unfamiliar with the slime concept, um, it, it originates from, excuse me, from, like, D&D. And their whole gimmick is they literally just kind of, like, slowly move towards you and try to envelop you and will slowly digest you. That's kind of the whole premise of them. They're they're not very intelligent normally, but they're usually like super over kind of like overpowered, <laughs> and they're they have one singular thing is like move, eat, move, eat, move, eat, and like it's, that's what they do. And but they're super usually like just insanely powerful to an extent. But they kind of take this to an extreme, and they give it a kind of a, a, a human intelligence level. So yeah. it's it's he, fun. I think he's loosely based on the Dragon Quest slimes. <laughs> He's got the same kind of blue shape, the same like yeah. dopey face. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of Iseki animes that come out and they're they just, start, <laughs> they start, they start with a ridiculous yeah. premise and they're a lot of fun for like three episodes. Yeah. Like there was the one last year where the guy was like a pro wrestler who got reincarnated into the world and yeah. you have a blast for like three or four episodes and then they just kind of fall flat on their face and they're boring as hell get out. Yeah, they just can't. This is a keep show that this is a show that manages to keep up the momentum. It manages to keep upping the stakes and topping itself. Well, and it's they, just it's just a roller coaster. It's great. They they take those tropes, like all the dumb tropes <laughs> of all these other Asekis, like, oh, you get reincarnated into a fantasy world. It's like fantasy art on our uh, sword art online. Well, meet this really hot chick that's got really busty boobs. And they're like, it's just constant, like just throw that. And they're like, but he wants nothing to do with these girls. And that's that's <laughs> the best part about it. He's like, he wants nothing to do with them. And then you get like all these goblins that literally they're just whatever, right? They're like supposed to be mm-hmm. the weakest creatures in the in the world there, or mm-hmm. and he like makes them super strong, right? Yeah. It's 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 all these little tropes that he does throughout on and on throughout the thing. And it's just like you it's it, it's funny right it, it, they take these kind of tropes and they kind of turn them on their head a little bit um so it, it's fun and it's a blast and it's just fun to see all the different kind of things and tropes they're going to throw in there but something i don't like so I'll, i'm going to go ahead and preface this what i don't like is there's no stakes ever right you always know that the main character right is gonna he's he's gonna win Right, uh, it, it's uh, Satoru. I, I can't say him. His, I'm, I'm saying his wrong. His name, right? Satoru. Satoru. I think that's what his name is. Mm-hmm. And, I, you always yeah, know. Rin Maru is what he calls himself. Yeah, once he gets it, reincarnated. It, yeah, Rin Maru is in the in the in the in the when he's a slime. But you you know he's never going to lose, right? You, yes. you know, there is always a butt pull. There, he always overcomes. Absolutely. And part of the show is just kind of waiting to see that moment. Yeah, it's a little not, bit, yeah. 
it's got some of the same feels as One Punch Man, where you know what's going to happen and you're waiting for it to happen, and then it happens, and it's like, yay! It happened, yay! So I, I do, I did enjoy that, um, but it is kind of a letdown. I would like to see him kind of get like run into one person, <laughs> just one, and, and because I do like, like, I like that, like that idea that they're just super powerful, and it's kind of like One Punch Man, where it's like. No matter how hard you know somebody tries, they're never going to beat him. That's kind of the premise of it. It's kind of goofy and it's funny, but in the back of my mind, I was like, "Eh, I don't really have to remember any of these bad guys because I know they're gonna like they're gonna get killed, and he's just gonna absorb their powers." So it's like, "Eh," that's kind of yeah. the goofy, goofy part of it, I guess. It's just like you know, the, you char- really the characterization. About it. Yeah, the characterization is pretty basic, and like you said, it's it's a roller coaster that's continuously topping itself. No, and as long as they can keep up that momentum, the show is fun and it's it's a blast. And I know we're tearing it down a bit here, but again, this is a show we both highly recommend. It's a lot of no, fun, ab- absolutely. So, but, but yeah, so but yeah, it's it's not it's not going to ever win like a no. you know an Oscar of anime. It's not a it's not a super deep. It's not going to change your life, but it's a lot of fun to watch. It's a nice it's a nice sit there and veg and not have to think about anything <laughs> for you know three or four you know maybe an hour depending on how long you watch how many episodes you watch. If you're like me and you just got sucked in and you, you know, started watching it and three hours later, you're like, oh, shit, maybe I should go do something. <laughs> That's true. It's it's not like Evangelion. You're not going to sit down and write a philosophy paper about it. But Oh, my God. <laughs> and your just brain hurts much. after watching something like that. And I'm just like, this is a great series, but my God, my head hurts so bad. <laughs> but yeah, but so... In regards to kind of the other things that they've come from this, they actually had uh, quite a few things other than just the anime. I know we were mainly talking about the anime, uh, which aired back in 2018 um, over on mm-hmm. in Tokyo. Um, but they've actually actually they they originally started the the, the manga uh, back in uh, 2017 or not 2017 2016 actually. I apologize. Uh, Serialized the web novel, so he actually but he was writing it back in 2013. Oh yeah, and this is like, and this is something you see with a lot of these Isekes. They were all web novels in the early 2000s to 2010s. And then the web novels became mangas and the mangas became anime. And we're just yeah. kind of seeing it trickle down the chain of creativity towards us. So, now. yeah, that's that's phenomenal. Like, they're, they're, they're kind of pushing that in. Like I said, you see this more and more often with a lot of these animes. They literally find, like you said, they find these, these web novels these web uh web series that people just make because you know they want to like this is how this is how you get noticed in japan for this kind of stuff apparently well, so and it's it's in america too like if it, take a look over oh, yeah. road for example i think uh self-publishing getting you know you can publish your own books on amazon you can make your own audiobooks and put them on audible self-publishing authors has become a big dream of people and it doesn't take a lot of buy-in and it's this really big untapped well of creativity as compared to like the more traditional manga process, yeah. which has kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit. So I think we're going to see this going forward. More and more movies and TV and stuff are going to be ripped off these these small web novels because, yep. good Lord, there's a lot of them. And so a lot yeah, of them are like, very high quality, actually. Yeah, like speaking of that, so uh, like uh, you can even go at things outside of the uh, – the web novels like so a critical role has been doing that like hardcore right they they came out with after they came out with their uh, their last their vox machina series they've come out with uh novel like uh graphic novels uh you know comic books and now mm-hmm. they're just they literally just released their uh amazon prime uh cartoon show a fully fledged tv show yeah. phenomenal I'm having a blast with it. I, that is one I'm watching every single week. And I don't know. I'm sure Kelly has too. So I haven't watched it yet. Kelly said she was going to watch it with Shayna. So we haven't maybe, actually gotten maybe to Maybe we yet. can do a, a bro night. We can sit and we should do a, and We should it. do a bro night because we, I haven't gotten have to a, it yet. A nice either. bottle of rosé. We can do a rosé or Chianti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do manicures too while we're at it. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can hear kelly making a snarky comment in the background i I'm just know what it, i can only imagine yep so that's that's kind of the rundown of it so um right now as of this time as of this uh, uh recording though if you guys want to go out and check it out i think they have you said they have do they have four seasons out james or is it one and a half it's four of the half seasons so two like 24 okay. episode seasons 
Okay, so you'd basically say it's it's two whole seasons essentially. Pretty much two whole seasons. Have... They they just wrapped up the most recent one this fall. So yeah, it's a, it'll so. probably be a while before the next season comes out. So it's a great time to catch up if you haven't seen it. No, absolutely. So I I would highly recommend this. Um, in regards to the reception, though, so just kind of put it in oh, respect, yeah, yeah. perspective, guys. I know in 2018, uh, it was actually the fifth best-selling uh, title when they printed it. Um, and I believe it was... It said by 2018, the man- it had sold yeah, manga, three and a half, almost three and a half million copies of manga. Yeah, I know. And on the... Uh, oh, I see, James. Look, it actually did win sure. a Crunchyroll Anime Award. Look at you. It's there never going to win any awards. Rimuru Tempest won Best Protagonist. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. In 2019, see, phenomenal. I mean, I but wouldn't yeah. call the I wouldn't call the Crunchyroll Awards a major award, but you know, <laughs> you know what? For them, it probably is. I don't know. Yeah. I I know there's like a big major like anime award somewhere uh, along the line, kind of like they do the the. the we the featured video it for other series before, and I forgot what it was called. Yeah, I I had to look it up and find it out, but but yeah. So let me ask you this, James. Uh, if you had to be reincarnated as something, what would you be re- reincarnated as? You know, based on this series, a slime is a pretty good choice. I mean, he's got I mean, it all. Yeah. I know. He's practically immortal. He can even assume a human form. I mean, I would I want mean, to have a male human form and like him who gets stuck you don't with want to be <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really but, awkward. I mean, you could do worse than being reincarnated as a slime. Of course, you, know, you could go with some of these other animes where you uh, like be flat out reborn as a god or something. So, I mean, there's always that. That just seems like too much work, in my opinion. <laughs> so, <laughs> too much, yeah. too much responsibility. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't feel like making sure the tides come in and out, James. That's not my, that's my, not my, 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 my shtick. Sorry. <laughs> if I would, I'd be a trickster god. I would be, I would be down for that. That'd be fun. You could be Loki. <laughs> Either that or his brother, where I just go on. I'd be the god of war, where I just like smack things. That'd be great. <laughs> so, but yeah. So let me ask you this, James. One last question before we get out of here. Uh, how many slimes out of ten would you give this? Um, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. It's a good one. Okay, I will I give it a. Good. I say it's it's a great show. It's a ton of fun to watch. It's just a little lacking in depth in a lot of places. So that's why I say nine out of ten. Highly recommend. And I, I would give it an eight out of ten because, like I said, I I, I know it's really good. And like I said, I just have that little hankering in the back of my mind that I just want a little more depth. And mm-hmm. again, that's just me being me. So never <laughs> a perfectionist. So, but highly recommend it, guys. If you want to go out and check it out, I believe they have it on uh, Crunchyroll. Is it on Funimation? It's on Funimation, right? It's on Funimation for sure. The dub is Crunchyroll has the subtitle. I'm sure you. Can, I think it's even on Netflix, honestly, too. Um, it is. It uh, Netflix picked up a bunch of the Funimation catalog recently. Yeah. So because I think they're it. kind of like they're acting as like the North American market right now a little bit. Yeah, kind, kind, of, of, kind of overlapping them a little bit. So yeah, but yeah. So go out and check it out, guys. Uh, let us know if you if you liked it. If you didn't like it, tell us why. If you did like it, tell us why again. But yeah. That pretty much wraps up our show for the day, guys. Um, this was our first episode of season three and our triumphant return into the podcasting space. So we're burr, going burr, to. Burr. Tr- I know, right? <laughs> I'm super excited. Uh, hopefully, this will be. Uh, so I believe I, as long as everything goes smoothly, we're going to try and do about a, a mo- once a month release on uh, stuff initially. And as things go along, uh, we're going to try and hopefully maybe, you know, pick it up to maybe doing our main show and then maybe doing an additional like supplemental show where we just talk about something really dumb or maybe Kelly and Jackie come in and they tell me how much they really liked whatever Miyazaki Miyazaki movie they want to talk about. (laughs) Or James can come in and talk about a Dune, Uh, the Dune books. Uh, I could could make a tree sound, dude. Don't don't tempt me. I'll do it. I will totally tempt you, <laughs> and you, we will talk about how the God Emperor rose from the sands, James. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a whole other. I'm, ball gonna, I'm gonna have to do it because. Uh, ooh, I, we, that'd, be we, fun. that'd be fun. It will be. Maybe fun. we can bring Papa Williams in too. Maybe he can come in and, and shoot the breeze. He might race. actually make an appearance for that one. He would. That would be really fun to talk to. Kind of like pick his brain on a little bit. So he listened to the Hitchhiker's Guide one. He enjoyed that one a lot. So there you go. Awesome. So, uh, well, before we get out of here, James, is there anything else you want to talk about? Any house cleaning like that? Um, nothing huge. Oh, mentioning the Royal Road uh, web novels. 
one you should check out is called Alpha Cultivation. Alpha Cultivation? It's that a sounds- mis- it's it's a mismatch of, you know, your standard cultivation novel trope. Okay. But the cultivator in question is an alpha cultivator. He cultivates big dick energy. And he's a Wow. He's like a he's a lifter. <laughs> Well, it's actually it's actually very wholesome and it's a lot of fun. So y- y- the the premise made me feel like I should watch that. I'll read this by myself downstairs with the lights turned off and the and the, cl- the blinds closed. But you've 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 made me I feel actually, a little better. I actually read the first six cha- the first six chapters to Kelly out loud one evening, and she was <laughs> laughing. She was laughing her ass off. She enjoyed it a lot. Okay, well, I'll, I'll have to check this out. <laughs> alpha cultivator. I will. I will see Al- this. Alpha cultivation. Yeah. Oh, it, it's a pitch. it's a serialized web novel. There's only like 25 chapters or something out so far. It's not bad. So it's not. It's like uh, I think the author said there's probably gonna be like 100 chapters in it. But so, oh. but it's it's a ton of fun. It's it's really good. That'd be fun. That might be something to make my uh, my make my night shift pass a little faster. Maybe maybe keep me <laughs> out of trouble. So but yeah. <laughs> so that is that's gonna be the our end of our show. Uh, I want to thank James for coming back again and and shooting the breeze with me. And hopefully in the near future, we're going to have, like you said, we're going to try and have some guests on. Um, I will let you guys know ahead of time about what's going on with that, if anything changes and whatnot. And yeah, we're going to go on and wrap it up, James. I appreciate you coming out. Always. It was a ton All of fun. All right, guys. All right. Have a wonderful, slimy weekend or month. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. If you're interested in keeping up to date with new episodes on our channel, add us on any of your favorite podcasting apps or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Seriously Pointless Conversations. If you have questions or concerns, please email us at seriouslypointlessconvo at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback. Thank you for listening to our show.